Defense and security was really the next industry where we took our research and our learning and started to apply it to practical robots. One of our very first was Rome's, and Rome's has a really interesting past because in order to demonstrate our value, we really had to demonstrate the robot to the users, which were our soldiers. So it was a DARPA grant. Our soldiers wanted to see how it worked. And this is back in the very late 90s. And what we did was to send our founder, Helen Greiner, and another woman with the robot to demonstrate to the soldiers. And in the late 90s, sending women to an army soldier camp was highly unusual. But iRobot knew that they could do the job and get it done. So they demonstrated Rome's, and that led us to some other industries and other uses of the robot. We had developed a robot here called Ariel. And Ariel works along the waterfront, looking for buried munitions, mines, things that are in that water that we can't see. That ability to search all throughout the area led to two different things. Immediately, it led to a robot here that was looking for those same mines, buried munitions, using magnets at the front. But again, remember, a lot of what we develop comes back later in another product as we've learned and developed the technology. Ariel searched along that waterfront. It covered every square foot that it was able to search. The initial Roomba design was based off of Ariel's ability to cover every square foot. Instead, Roomba covered every square foot of your floor and picked up the debris that it found on the floor. These were the early versions of the robots. Eventually, time evolved, and we were seeing that there were more and more conflicts in places like Iraq, in Afghanistan. And a lot of that required things like cave clearing, mine hunting, buried IEDs. And so we had to develop a robot that was able to do that work and help those soldiers alongside. That robot became known as PackBot. We're gonna go take a look at PackBot and see how it evolved. So PackBot evolved from our earlier designs and PackBot is really a versatile robot out there helping our first responders, our SWAT teams, police officers, and those army soldiers. PackBot had treads, which enabled it to be outside, going across any different kind of terrain. The robot's outfitted with a gripper to pick up objects and cameras on top as well as mounted around the robot. We're driving the robot with a laptop, and eventually we moved over to a game controller because it made it very easy for us to instruct people how to use the robot, make that training really fast, and make it easy to use in the field. One of the really unique things about the PackPot is this arm. The arm actually extends to about eight to 10 feet. However, we have to think about it. How do we keep that robot stable? Well, what's interesting is once again, we go back to our earlier designs. Way back when we worked on toys, we made a dinosaur, it's a Raptor. And as you can see, it's very heavy in the middle. And then of course we stuck a really heavy head on the end because Raptors had very large heads. Well, if you're a walking two-legged dinosaur with a heavy head, you're gonna tip over, you're gonna tip forward. So we gave the dinosaur a really long tail, and that balanced out the robot. PackBot has a really heavy center of gravity. It's in the middle. Once we extend that arm, we need to balance it. So we can use both the arm to balance the center of gravity, but also these flippers move, and that allows us to keep that robot stable. We'll take a look also later at Cobra, whereas PackBot weighs about 50 pounds, Cobra's 500 pounds. We do the exact same thing. We can balance with the position of the arm as well as those flippers. Where do we use these robots? Again, evolution of time. Things like Iraq, Afghanistan, were starting to be more prominent in our world, in our history. Those areas had a lot of caves. We were doing cave clearing, and at the time, the way they were doing cave clearing was to send somebody inside with a rope and a knife, and if something happened, they'd pull them back out. To iRobot, that was unacceptable. 
Robots are better suited for that mission. These robots could get inside. We could use the video to see what was going on in the cave. Nobody had to be in harm's way. Later on, that transpired more to IED discovery, IED clearing, things like explosive ordinances where the robot could get out. The robot can explore it with that camera. If the robot does get hit by an IED or some explosive, robots can be repaired. Later, as we travel through time, these robots were used places like 9-11. The robot was inside the buildings doing damage control, damage inspection. They were used in Iraq, Afghanistan, and then both the PacBot and the Cobra were used on um, places like Fukushima. So these robots, while they are not a part of what we do now at iRobot, we are very, very proud of their history proud of the thousands of lives that they saved and the work that they did.